Hello there. Here I review movies, and today's film is The Bike Riders. It's a crime drama about a fictional motorcycle gang that rose to prominence in the 1960s called The Vandals. Jeff Nichols wrote and directed the film, which stars Tom Hardy as the leader of The Vandals, Johnny, Austin Butler as the main Vandal, Benny, and Jody Comer as the lead, Kathy. Let's begin with the positives. The story is an intricate tale that lays out a ton of groundwork to begin. The base storyline is Kathy talking to a reporter and telling him about how the club began, describing each of its members and going over major events in chronological order. As they talk, the film flashes back to those moments and we watch the story unfold from there. The writing is consistent from start to finish and builds a fascinating world with complex characters. The interactions and connections between them are deep enough to spend days unpacking. The cast takes their roles and dials them up to 11 with crazy accents, weird mannerisms, and a lot of great deliveries. They're playing savage biker men from the 60s, so there is a lot of frat boy behavior and gang culture on display. Each of the vandals gets a big moment and a unique personality trait they get to show off, and it leads to some odd but fascinating moments. Like Cockroach trying to explain how eating bugs isn't that bad, or Zipko talking about being denied enlistment. The three leads also nail their performances. You have Hardy playing a quiet, principled man who is quite cunning and violent. He leads the Vandals through earned respect and represents the older criminals who didn't start out bad. Austin Butler plays a young man with a free spirit and few worries. He likes to fight, he likes to flirt, but he doesn't want to commit to anything. He is the strong and silent type and Butler plays it stoically. Jodie Comer plays Kathy, a housewife married to Benny. She is a naive girl from a small town who finds herself pulled into the excitement of the Vandals. As she spends more time with them, she enjoys it less and less. By the end, she's willing to go to war with Johnny for Benny's soul. The visual journey takes place in rural America with old brownstone houses and a few old-style bars. They also spend a lot of time outside on their bikes, riding down the highway, or hanging out in fields racing and drinking. The camera work is generally clean, with decent lighting across the board. There's a few big scenes of the gang riding together, and one big scene of them setting fire to a bar. There's also some brawls where everyone gets to throw a few punches and take some hits. It's backed by rock and country songs that are meant to add some flavor to the atmosphere and hype up the action. When the characters are talking, things are generally quiet, but sometimes they have in-universe music playing at the bar or on the radio. The songs are a lot of fun and add a rebellious vibe to the film. They tend to lighten the mood a lot when they show up and help temper those darker scenes. Okay, moving on to the negatives. Despite the story having complex characters and a real in-depth setup and a ton of things to do, the film is quite boring. They never go in-depth on any one storyline or try to get the audience invested in the fate of any of the vandals. They also don't show off any major crimes or action sequences, and the moments they do show are short and somewhat unimpressive. Almost all of them are in the trailer too, so if you've seen that, the only parts you're missing is the drama. The cast ends up being severely limited by the writing. The film spreads the screen time around too thinly, and even the leads end up with very short performances without much emotion in them. Jodie Comer comes the closest to getting enough content, but most of it is bland back and forth with Mike Faced. The interview was especially egregious. It takes up a lot of time in the film, and neither actor is doing anything more than light conversation, yet it felt like a significant portion of the film. It also hacks up the other storylines and makes them feel jumbled. Visually, the film suffers from the lack of standout moments. All of the big action moments were in the trailer, and there were only four or five of them. They don't last more than a few minutes, and the action is boringly simple. Guy hits guy. Guy throws guy. Guy bites guy. There's little back and forth and no buildup. Sound-wise, the music just doesn't connect with the story very well. It sounds nice and it adds a little bit of atmosphere, but they mostly use it for when they're riding or partying. It's not trying to emphasize any big emotions or create cinematic moments. It's just background noise. They had a lot of emotional conversations that would have benefited from a more purposeful and emotional soundtrack. Like all of the moments Benny and Johnny share. Personally, I wasn't that impressed by this film. The characters are neat and it's a cool environment, but they just don't do anything with it. I was waiting for them to pick a character and give them a journey to go on, but that never happened. The film is like a mockumentary in a lot of ways, where it feels like you're watching from a safe distance. The actors are doing a good job, the writing makes sense, and the production quality isn't bad. But none of it really stands out either. As for a rating, I'd give this film a 5 out of 10. Remember, these are my thoughts on the film. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye bye